Some say that your god is what you think about the most. Whether or not you believe in a literal, intelligent creator of the universe, your god, figuratively, your sense of what is important, is whatever occupies your mind more than anything else. Film is what I think about the most, but in a very real way, film has divine properties. It creates. It fashions worlds from nothing. Let there be light, and there was light. In a more direct and less fanciful way, film has also been the home of God in narrative. We see the face of God. Film has espoused tenets of a multitude of faiths, but Christianity has been at the forefront of cinema since the silent era, bringing us glimpses of saints, miracles, all things we could not imagine seeing before, only reading in our Bible. Christianity and art has been intertwined for centuries, owing much to the fact that those who commissioned art in the medieval and renaissance periods were often agents of the church, besides nobles and royalty, who else had such deep pockets. But film gave the Judeo-Christian god movement and flavor. Some corners of film were occupied by direct biblical adaptations, like the King of Kings or the Ten Commandments. The old Hollywood epics were often about the most epic of tales, those of God. And those still exist in the modern era, although modernity has also guided most modern biblical epics down new paths, some for the better and some for the worse. It's one of the most enduring aspects of film from its inception to today. Scripture is choked with amazing stories to tell, boundless messages to impart that still may be relevant today. My favorite films with themes related to the Abrahamic God, however, are not direct adaptations of the ancient stories, but instead films with noticeable scriptural influence, like Ashes and Diamonds, which takes place following World War II, and A Serious Man, a modern retelling and repurposing of the Book of Job, not to mention a criticism of its ideals. Unfortunately, for every sincere, heartfelt film that is thematically related to the God of Abraham, there is a low-budget and or disingenuous Christian exploitation film that panders to the faithful, teaches obedience through fear, espouses hypocritical, condescending lessons, or some ghastly combination of these traits. Left Behind is a story of God calling the faithful to heaven, as part of the much-disputed prophetic event called the Rapture. The underlying message of the film is that you will only be saved if you follow the path of Jesus Christ. Regardless of whether or not someone is kind or generous, a Muslim character, for example, is basically a hero but is still not saved because he is not a Christian. God's Not Dead follows a similar line of thought. Atheists are inherently bad, not because of their actions that may or may not be informed by their atheism, but because of their doubt in and of itself. In addition to this, it features a supporting character who is more of a caricature of the political left, thereby claiming Christianity for the American right wing. Sincere Christian movies do not equate religion with party affiliation. Christianity can inform an individual's politics, but not only in one direction. These are not spiritual films. They are not inviting, not welcoming into the realm of Christianity, or espousing Christian traits like sacrifice and redemption. They're more like bad sermons. Condemnation of the non-believer more than condemnation of hurtful behavior. Non-belief as the worst sin, the most egregious act one can commit against God. Expectation of proof, reasonable doubt. These are loathsome to the new crop of Christian exploitation films. These films are divisive, not welcoming. Judgmental, not kind. These films have become so prevalent that it's enough to make one think that these mean-spirited films are representative of predominant Christian thought, but I would argue that these are unfortunate outliers. I find that there is more sincere spirituality in Ahazar Balthazar, a film that is both devoutly religious, but also made by a director who is often said to be a lapsed Catholic. More important than that, this film respects its audience. It presents a narrative steeped in Christian symbols that is sincere and worthy of being called a Christian film. This is the standard by which modern faith films should aspire. It does not talk down to the viewer, and it does not pass off a sermon for a feature film. Robert Bresson, the writer and director, was often called the patron saint of film, partly because of his contributions to the medium, but also because of his Catholic upbringing and recurring spiritual themes in his oeuvre. The film is not a prosaic, one-to-one -one allegory. This is not Animal Farm. Characters and events assume the souls and landmarks of beings and significant actions in the Bible. But who is who and what is what changes depending on the scene. 
It may be more accurate to say that Brisson has created a microcosm of his own Catholicism, both thematically and narratively, as told from the perspective of an innocent, in this case an animal. In the beginning of the film, Balthazar is purchased by an old man, and his daughter and friends baptize him. Jesus Christ rode a donkey on what we would now call Palm Sunday, and he was similarly blessed by John the Baptist. In this regard, we can ascribe to Balthazar a Christ-like innocence, but he himself is not only a Christ figure, more like an observer of Christ, somewhat attached, but not part and parcel to the Son of God, more like something that carries Christ, or knows him. Balthazar is a biblical name, but it is not the name of the Messiah. Instead, it is a name often attributed to one of the Magi who visits Jesus and offers him myrrh, a resin known for its aroma. At one point in the film, Balthazar is packed with supplies to be smuggled by Gerard and his cohorts. One thing they pack is perfume, a reference to the biblical Balthazar. They also pack gold, another reference to the gifts of the Magi. The donkey Balthazar's life traverses Judeo-Christian teachings, such as when the children give him food that they call the salt of wisdom, a reference to the fruit of wisdom that precipitated Adam and Eve being cast out of the Garden of Eden. The other animals that Balthazar meets brings to mind the story of Noah's Ark, Marie, the person who cares the most for Balthazar throughout the film, is most commonly linked to Mary, Mother of God. We see a few moments in the film in which she adamantly protects her virginity. There are a few more direct references to Christ as it pertains to Balthazar. Much like the Stations of the Cross, the donkey is passed from master to master and is beaten, whipped, burned, mocked, and eventually left to die alone, surrounded by his flock, a group of sheep who can do nothing. Balthazar dies, literally burdened by carrying contraband on his back, much as Christ died burdened by carrying the sins of humanity. Balthazar's flowers resemble the crown of thorns Christ wore while carrying the cross. The bread and wine bring to mind transubstantiation, the miracle of food and drink becoming the body and blood of Christ. Some characters in the film are Judas figures. Also, the bleeding Balthazar recalls the wound in the side of Christ, pierced by a spear. However, bear in mind that these Christian symbols and references do not create a one-to-one -one allegory. It is, rather, a rearrangement of Christian iconography in hopes of creating a new world and a new story to discover. Rassan would probably consider a reading of his film simply as a donkey as a stand-in for Jesus to be reductive. He has so much more going on. Let's go deeper and see what grander ideas the director wanted to convey. Il faut pardonner. À tous. À vous, il sera beaucoup pardonné à cause de vos souffrances. Sacrifice is a central component to Christian morality. Christ sacrifices himself for the sake of humanity. Christians strive to attain that level of selflessness. In the film, Balthazar is the sacrifice. His human masters take advantage of him. But like I said, it's not entirely the same. Christ was willing. Balthazar can't understand that kind of complexity. He has canonized a saint in one scene, but that still doesn't give him any agency. Marie is more than just a Mary stand-in. She is representative of humanity's ability to be redeemed. There is hope for humanity as long as Marie exists. She is the proof that humankind is worth being saved. Beyond the religious, there is a broader current running through the film. Captivity. The feeling of being trapped. Not having autonomy in one's actions. Balthazar and Marie exist in parallel captivities. Balthazar is passed from master to master, mistreated by nearly everyone. Similarly, Marie has a series of caretakers, her father, the villainous Gerard, and the clueless Jacques. In each instance, she finds that she is not given much freedom to act or to even think on her own. I should note that, in addition to the donkey as a reference to Palm Sunday, it is also a reference to Dostoevsky's The Idiot. The book gave Brisson his initial inspiration for the film. Brisson gives us a vision of scripture that is less pristine than we are accustomed. He acknowledges mankind's vulgarities and hypocrisies. Brisson was raised Catholic and made films that were influenced by that upbringing, but his feelings evolved over time, once declaring later in life that he was a Christian atheist, but offering little insight into what that meant. His films, even this one, may contain some jabs at organized religion. Conversely, there are interviews in which he calls himself a believer, and that his films are obviously religious. 
It's difficult to pin down his exact beliefs, because over the course of 98 years on this earth, before he passed away in 1999, his feelings may have changed several times. He once said, There is the feeling that God is everywhere, and the longer I live, the more I see that in nature, in the country. When I see a tree, I see that God exists. I try to catch and to convey the idea that we have a soul, and that soul is in contact with God. That's the first thing I want to get in my films that we are living souls.